Welcome to part 8 of rebuilding a very old horizontal steam engine. This is a continuation of the crankshaft and on this one I'm showing how I machined the crank webs. In a similar way to machining the main shafts, machining the crank webs follows the same pattern. They have to be machined accurately. And this is forge or chuck work. And the first thing I'm doing here is marking out the parts. The dimensions were obtained from the original broken crank web and I'm transferring the dimensions to two new pieces of metal. Then I mount them in a four jaw chuck and for those of you who don't know what a four jaw chuck is it's a chuck with four jaws which is self-explanatory of course but the jaws are fully independently adjustable so you can position irregular shaped pieces in a chuck and machine them. You're currently watching this process in operation the first thing to do is to securely clamp the piece of metal into the forge or chuck and align it so that when you use the centre drill, it drills a hole exactly where you need it. After drilling a pilot hole with a quarter inch drill, I would then drill through the work using a drill size one imperial size less than the finished size required. After which, I would use a reamer to get an accurately finished half inch diameter hole. I'd just like to say that when using a reamer in the lathe, it's most important to go through the work at a slow speed. Don't go through too fast, the hole will become oversized. Once the first half of the crank web has been reamed to the correct size, remove it from the chuck. Only undo two of the jaws, don't undo all four, because all you need to do now is put in the next piece of metal, tighten up the two jaws, and it's in exactly the same place as the first piece was. So once again, it's through with the centre drill. After this, drill through with a pilot drill, and as before, followed by a drill that is one imperial drill size less than the half an inch finished diameter that you need. And once you've drilled through with this, as before, slow down the lathe and use a reamer. Use a half inch reamer to get the hole accurate. Then take the pair of crank webs and push a piece of half inch bar through the hole. They should both line up perfectly. You can check this with a ruler or with your fingers. If everything is okay so far, you can proceed by putting one half of the half finished crank web into the four jaw chuck, setting up the center drill to the scribed line in exactly the same way as previously described. Center drill first, followed by pilot drill, then drill through the crank web using an imperial drill, one drill size below half an inch, followed by a half inch reamer. Don't forget to slow down the lathe. And then it gets really exciting. Repeat the process for the other hole. So in the end, you've drilled and reamed four holes. And if everything's right, you can assemble the parts and see what they look like and they need to look like this. They need to be a firm fit on the shaft. They shouldn't rattle about, they shouldn't fall off. They should be able to be slid up and down just about. I'm not showing how to make a crankshaft that is a press fit. If this was the case, you would have to make smaller holes and make everything a lot tighter. This crankshaft's going to be held together with Loctite 603 and then pinned. This crankshaft has to have a recess on the crank web. If you look at the original way back, you'll see what I mean. Now, I completely forgot about this, to be perfectly honest, but never mind. I loctited the shaft into the crank web, fitted the crank web into the four jaw chuck, I supported the shaft with a live center, adjusted the four jaw chuck with a dial test indicator in place to ensure concentricity, and off I went, removing metal on a large scale. Well, a large scale for this. Although some of the purists will be screaming by now, this is a crankshaft that's built up using Loctite 603. It's not turned from one piece and it's not pressed together. And this doesn't bother me personally because I'm a musician, not an engineer. One of the good things about Loctite 603 as a product is it holds parts together very well indeed. But if you warm it up with a blow lamp and you don't have to get it too hot, Loctite 603 will give way and release the parts, which is brilliant. It means you can repair things, which otherwise you would not be able to do. For instance, replacing a worn or damaged crank pin. 
but all loctited parts on a crankshaft like this need to be pinned. These are temporarily pinned, and there'll be more about this later. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.